So today we're going to start section two, some ways to prove that triangles are congruent. So if two triangles are congruent, you know that all six pairs of corresponding parts are also congruent. But these are easier, there are easier ways to tell if two triangles are congruent than comparing all six pairs of corresponding parts. So in other words, you don't have to compare all three line segments and all three angles to prove that triangles are congruent. So what they're saying is this. You can have two congruent triangles. And so what we learned yesterday is they're congruent if this is congruent to this, that line segment is congruent to that line segment, this line segment is congruent to this line segment, this angle is congruent to that angle, if this angle is congruent to that angle, and if this angle... Those are all requirements for it to be congruent? No, I said that's what we did yesterday. Those are the corresponding parts of your two triangles. Is that the equilateral What? Thing? That's a right triangle. I'm just picking any two triangles. So none of the angles have to be the same. I'm just saying that if we have two congruent triangles, we know that if the corresponding parts are all congruent, you have congruent triangles. Okay? But there are some things, some ways you can prove the triangles are congruent without having, all, having to look at all six angles and all six sides. So the first one is called the SSS postulate. Right? Okay? The SSS is for side, side, side. So that means that if you have two triangles and I'm trying to draw it's funny. It's SSS. All right. If I have two triangles, if I have two triangles and all of the sides, corresponding sides, are congruent then the triangles are congruent, even without looking at the angles. I don't need to look at the angles because I know if all the sides are, the corresponding sides are congruent, then the corresponding angles have to be congruent. Okay? So I don't need to know what the measures of the angles are. If I know that the measure of this side is the same as the measure of this side, and the measure of this side is the same as the measure of this side, and that this side is congruent to this side. If those are all congruent, the corresponding parts of the three sides, then the two triangles are congruent. That's all the SSS postulate says. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles themselves are congruent. Okay. The next two postulates, because there's three of these, will use the following terms to describe the parts. Okay. Lines, so everyone's looking down at that triangle there, X, Y, Z. Let me try to draw it so that it won't make it. Where? On your worksheet that I passed on. Number one. Oh. It looks like this, right? And it's X, Y, and Z. Okay? All right. Nice. X, Y is opposite of angle Z. See, those are opposite. So, give me two more things that are opposite, Sal. Um, oh, uh, y, Z, and X. Good. And Jordan? The last one? Wait, which one? Yeah. So try and like do up here. Oh. Uh, was a question. <laughs> what is the final angle and side that are opposite? Um, angle. All right. Angle X, Z, and angle Y are opposite of each other. Oh. Okay? Well, that's all, that's all they mean when they say opposite. Okay? So the next postulate is the SAS. SAS postulate. And that says that if two sides and the included angle. All right, what's an included angle? Where's the. It's not remote. All right, included angle. All right, so angle X here is the included angle between xy and yz. Notice this is the angle whose vertices are xz and xy. So it's the vertex of the two uh, other angles? This right, is the included so it, angle. So it's the angle? It's the vertex. It's, yes, the angle that's where the two line segments meet is the included angle. OK? All right? So okay. if I want the included angle, that's what it's talking about. OK? So if two sides. And the included angle are congruent to two sides 
and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And that is the SAS postulate. This stands for side angle side. SSS side side side, right? Okay. Side angle side. So if you have a side, an included angle, and another side that are all congruent to another triangle, then the whole, both, both triangles are congruent. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, the last one. The last one is the ASA. Who knows what that stands for? Well, okay. If two angles and the included side, so let's say I have these angles, and this is, would be the included side, right? It's the side that's between those two angles. Mm -hmm. That's included side. Okay. If I want the opposite, what's the opposite side, Michael of X? Uh, XC or wait, opposite side. Opposite side of angle Z. X. Z. Well, Z is not a side. That's an angle. The opposite side of y angle Z. X. Y Z. Good. So this is the included side. This would be the opposite side over there. Okay. All right. So if two angles in the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles in the included side, two angles in the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So if I have all three sides that are congruent to another triangle, the triangles are congruent. If I have uh, two sides and an included angle that are congruent to two sides and an included angle of another triangle, those two triangles are congruent. And then finally, if I have two angles and an included side that are congruent to two angles and include the side of another triangle. Those triangles are congruent. That's all the section is really, that's the only thing new in this section are those three. You're going to use those quite a bit. Again, as we get to the proofs, you're going to see that we're going to ASA, SSA. use those to prove the triangles are congruent. So you're going to be proving that sides are the same or else two angles and an included side are the same or that two sides and an included angle are the same. Okay? So if you look down at your study guide, at the bottom there, it gives you an example. It says, can two triangles be proved congruent? If so, write the congruence and name the postulate used. Okay? So A, since the vertical angle of POS, everyone says POS, and TOR are congruent, then triangle POS is congruent to triangle TOR by the SAS postulate. Okay, so in example A there, what do you have? You have a side, namely PO and OT that are congruent. You have a second side, which are SO and TO that are congruent. I'm sorry, RO, I apologize, RO are congruent. And then you have an included angle, which, are, which is congruent. So you know those two triangles are congruent. That's all that this is getting at, is that if you have those, any of those three situations, SAS, SSS, SSS, SAS, SSS, SAS, and ASA. Now it's changing colors on. <laughs> I never know what it's going to choose to do from one day to the next. It's changed colors on me for no reason, but okay. Uh, so wow. you're ready, it's getting ready for Thanksgiving. If you have any of those situations, then you have congruent triangles. And so I have one more minute. Let's see if we can knock it out. Well, look at the proof here for number nine. Let's look at this. So you have this, you have a, you have a parallelogram that's cut by a transversal. And so what do you have here? H and I are parallel to G, J. And then you have HG parallel to IJ. So that's how you know you have a parallelogram. You have two sets of parallel sides, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have this. So, oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so this is parallel to this. This is parallel to this. Okay. And they want you to prove that triangle GHJ is congruent to triangle IGH. Well, okay. you can use, like, can you use the so what's uh, statement one? Well, let's start with statement one. H I is parallel to G J, and H G is parallel to I J. Right, and that's because it's given. So that's always the easiest step, right? The first step. Now you have angle one is congruent to angle two. Alternate interior angles. Okay, good. And angle three to four, alternate interior angles. You have two angles cut by a transversal, alternate interior. So number three. It says reflexive property. 
property. So what is the reflexive property? It's when A equals A and A line A B is equal to B A. H J equals something is equal, H J. Something is equal, equal to, to itself, itself, right? But it's in a different order. It can alter okay. order. Well, so what 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 the first in step two, we have two angles that are congruent. So what property did we learn that has two congruent angles? Uh, S, 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 S. No, it's all sides. SAS. What? SAS. SAS is two sides of one angle. ASA. <laughs> well, that's by process of elimination. Yeah, that does work. Because what? ASA is two angles and a side. <laughs> right? And what are we given here? Uh, I'm sorry. Let's... Two angles and a side. We're given two angles. Well, we don't have the side yet, but we have two angles. And the only one that has two angles is the ASA. So you can tell by number four, your reason at the end is going to be ASA postulate, because that's the only one that you have that would work. And so what would be the side that you need to be included of those two angles between one and two and three and four? No. Um, Wait, but wouldn't... You have to have an included side. What would be equal to itself? What line segment? H, HJ. HJ is, equal, is congruent to HJ. Right. That's the reflexive property. Everything's have, equal to itself. But I have a question. Um, and that's how you get here it. Here it says, since box. AC is a common side, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Here it's the same thing. Where do we have, they have a common side. They have a common side. This, this is HIJ and HGJ have a common side. So what is the last reason also to be able to be SSS? No, because what other sides do you know are equal to each other? For those triangles to be equal, you'd have to know that HG is congruent to IJ. Ah, yes. You don't know that. Hey, what do you know? You have two angles on the side. It wasn't me. It was somebody popped the tag. Did everybody write the homework down? Uh, what? No, no, it's usually up there. Uh, page 124 and 1 through 25 is 1 to 15 odd. And page 16, I'm sorry, and number 16. 126. Do you guys print these out online? Do you yeah, have? I printed mine out. Okay. Yeah. I know the algebra I write it on the board, but with you guys, I don't want to have to write it on the board. So print them out Let's online. Go online again. What should I do with my homework? Go online. Do like, like, I did everything else, but for two more oh, my team, so. Okay. What? I really want to shoot my face. Why is the face? Like.